Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. I was going to do a live stream later at 3 p.m., but I have a bunch of things to do today, so I want to do the video now so that you have it. I want to take you through a hip and glute strengthening routine. I had a request last week on one of my live streams, and um, so I want to take you through it. This is a functional routine for runners. It's not going to take a very long time, but um, this has been instrumental in not only myself as a former competitive runner, but as a longtime martial artist, um, but also as a coach in the last two decades. I definitely recommend this to a lot of uh, folks who want to just develop some more strength and want to become healthier and stay injury free, uh, help reduce injuries, this is a great routine. And again, it's functional. You can use it for anything, any other sports, but it's a great one for runners. So essentially all you need are ankle weights, okay? Five, 10 pounds, whatever works. So I just put them down here, all right? And um, I'm gonna take you to a very simple routine, okay? I've got a mat behind me and, and a foam roller, but you don't really need those. Um, it's not mandatory, but I just use it for because it's softer, and uh, this for my neck. So this is a um, essentially a four movement routine. First off, this is for the hips and glutes and stuff like that. So I want to take you through this. So essentially, what I'm doing is I'm lying down like this, right? Okay. And by the way, if you like stuff like this, if you're a coach or an athlete, and you want to learn fully detailed training programs, subscribe to this channel right now. Take a look at my videos. I've got 200 plus videos out already. And I've got a bunch more coming. Now I'm going to do more specific strength routines and other routines like that. So don't miss out. I'm speaking from two decades experience, plus, two decades plus a former competitive runner and a coach. So I'm also a USATF certified coach as well. But um, so anyway, let's get to this. Okay, so this is how the first part of the routine. I'm lying down on my ankle weights here to my, to my ankles, okay? So I'll do one leg at a time. And then I'm going to take it to a couple different angles so that you can see certain particular movements, okay? So... Just gonna put this leg down here, and I'm also keep in mind I'm keeping my opposite leg bent to protect my lower back. Okay, so the first movement obviously just coming up and down like this. Okay, up and down. Okay, let's just say you're doing eight to ten reps. I generally do sets of twenty to twenty-five reps, but that's just me. This is what I'm doing for a long time. But you're coming up and down. You try to keep your toe pointed towards you as possible, as, as high as possible. You try to keep your knee locked. Okay, so up and down, you're not letting it touch the floor, okay? Now, that's one movement. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you this way. Now watch what I do, just, see, just to see what it looks like this way, okay? Now, I'm gonna take it a little bit differently. I'm gonna turn the foot in and do a set like this, okay? A set like this, and then after that's done, turn the foot out and do a set like this, okay? And again, you could do up the middle one set, left and right, then turn the foot in, do left, then right, and then turn the foot out, do left and right, however you want to do it. But it's important to get those angles. You're getting the different, different components of the outside of the hip, the inside of the hip, and you're getting a little bit more isolation in areas. And again, while protecting the lower back, you're using the other leg uh, by bending the other leg. So that you can do, and you, know, you start with 8 to 10 reps. Work your way up, 15, 20, and whatnot, over time. And again, Two sets is enough for now. You don't have to do a boatload of sets right now. So anyway, it's a good functional routine, and you don't need 30, 40, 50 minutes to do a strength routine. If you do the right things in a condensed period of time, you're going to be in good shape. Okay. And again, I do, I do the other side. So the same thing, same concept here. Straighten the leg up and down. Okay. Not touching the floor. And again, turning my foot in. Bringing it up, knee locked, and then turning your foot out. Bringing it up, bringing it up, and then knee locked, okay? That's the first movement, okay? So, in a sense, you're hitting upwards and adduction, adduction, your hip flexors. So, very important areas that are critical to the functional uh, functionality of being a, a healthy runner and progressing along, progression along the way. So, that's the first one. Now, the second one, I'm doing a straight line here. Now, I'm going to do specific adduction and abduction, okay? Outside of the hip, inside of the hip, all right, or the, or the groin. So what I'm doing is keeping a straight line in my body. I'm going to turn this foot, turn the toes in, and I'm going to leave with the heel. And this one comes straight up, straight up. Hips, straight up, okay? Same thing, 8, 10, you build towards 20 reps over time. And then after this one, I stay on the side. I just bend this leg in front of me, and then I come up with the bottom leg. Also leading with the heel, coming up with the bottom leg, okay? Let me turn this down a little bit so you can see a little bit more 
here, coming up. Just like that. So outside focus here, inside focus there. Then you turn, opposite side. Make sure your body's in as straight of a line as possible, okay? You don't want to be out like this. You want to be way too over. Just a straight line. Leading with the heels on the outside component. Same thing. Then you bend this leg over. You can even hold the leg. Lead with the heel on the inside. Okay? Abduction and adduction. Okay? Inside, outside. Again, alternating. And then you flip over. After you do two sets of whatnot, flip over and do the other side. Okay, now let's go over to glutes. I'll give you a couple of glutes specific movements on all fours. Okay, now I'll give you a couple different ones. Oh, forgive me for moving the cameras, but I want to make sure you get a good angle here. So, keeping the weights on, on all fours, bending one leg, it's coming straight up. Straight up. Straight up. Just like that. And again, 8, 10, 15 reps over time, two sets building towards three or four over time. And you alternate, okay, straight up. Glute focused, straight up, okay? Just like that. And if you do this entire routine, it might take you 10 minutes, but it's going to be a well-spent 10 minutes. Well-spent 10 minutes. Now, from here, on all fours, you can go down to the elbows if you want. Then you straighten the leg, okay? Now, I'm going to look here a little bit. Straight leg, lead up with the heel, straight up, straight up. That's the second glute movement, one leg at a time. Same thing, then you switch, lock the knee, straight up, straight up, straight up, okay? Lock the knee when you're doing that one, no straight leg. Anytime you do a straight leg exercise, unless it's, unless it's unless what I say, otherwise you generally want to lock your knee, okay? So that's the second part of the glute. Or, Another glute exercise. Now, what you can do from here, if you want to continue going on to glute, and the glute is a very important push-off muscle, help you accelerate, right? Help you run faster. It's a power muscle. So what you can do, and you've probably seen these, okay? And you don't necessarily need ankle weights for these ones, but you can just you can cross one leg over the other. Okay, put your hands out to the side and come up. And stretch, hold for two seconds, down. Flex, hold for two seconds. Down. Flex. Hold for two seconds. Down. Eight or ten reps. Then you switch sides. Okay? Isolate the other glute. And down. Hold for two, three, down. Eight or ten reps, 15 reps to build up over time. And then lastly, both feet are on the floor. Okay? And you can put your hands here, you can put your hands to the side. They just come straight up. Together. Isolate. Squeeze the cheeks, squeeze the cheeks together. Isolate. Okay, isolate. And the same thing. So if you're doing the whole routine, whether it's two sets of 10, you do everything two sets of 10. Okay, and over time, whatever, it's two sets of eight, you start with two sets of five. Um, starting gradually and building gradually will help um, minimize your soreness and help build strength over time gradually. And check out my soreness versus injury video because you'll be able to tell the difference between the two. That's in the description below, so you won't want to miss that video either. But... Um, that, it's a simple routine, okay? Just those exercises alone. You could add some complementary movements, some lower back and, and some core strengthening exercises, okay? But lying down like this also is a little bit different than you standing up and trying to do this where your body's tilting over and whatnot. It helps protect your lower back. helps protect other parts of your bodies. And again, not a crazy routine. So we did this, right? Up and down with the knee locked. Then we did the side-to-side -side movements, right? Here. Straight line, here, straight line. Then we did the glutes, okay, we're over here. Bent leg, straight up, and then straight leg, straight up, okay? And again, the whole movement, the whole routine might take 10 minutes, okay? Um, I wanted to start you with these because it's a good start, and then over time, you can build into it. You can add more movements to it. A lot of folks think you have to do this long routine right away. Let me go from nothing to a full-out professional routine. It's not the way to do it if you're not doing anything already in terms of strength and functional strength. Build in over time, just like you do your running. Your strength training should be follow suit. Gradual progression, dra gradual increase in intensity or gradual increase in volume. Not at the same time. One or the other. Okay? 
twice a week. If you get to the point where you can do three times a week, fine. Fine. But this is a great start. And you can incorporate core and some other movements in this. But this is a great way to do this routine. I would encourage you to do it either the day of a, of a hard workout, maybe after the workout, or the day after a workout and an easy run. Because if there is any soreness, it's generally going to kick in about 24 to 48 hours. So it could be, it's called DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. So then it allows you to have a couple of recovery days afterward. I would not do this the day before a race if you happen to get sore uh, or day before a hard workout. I would generally do it the day of or after, just as an FYI. So, but again, you do what you feel is appropriate for yourself or for your athletes. But start with this routine. Let me know what you think. Okay, and uh, give me some feedback. Give me some questions. I mean, some questions in the comments. Happy to answer them. And I'm gonna follow on with another routine. I I've got several requests that I've got from some uh, some folks on last week's live stream. So again, sorry that I couldn't do a live stream today, but I wanted to get you the routine that I was going to do on the live stream. So follow it, try it. Let me know what you think. If you have questions at all, feel free to reach out to me directly at uh, Top of the Line Running on uh, Instagram or Black Belt Running Coach at gmail.com. So, um, happy holidays, everybody. Happy, merry, whatever you celebrate. And uh, I'm hoping to see you all next weekend. Over and out.